In this video, I'll be ranking every Minecraft server in a tier list. Both Bedrock and Java from the Hive to Hypixel, I will rank the worst and the best of the most popular Minecraft servers all in this video. This is the conclusive Minecraft servers tier list. Also, if you like this video, you are giving me more views, so you have the power to help me and I'd really appreciate if you did. And now, the tier list. Just in case you don't know, the way this tier list works is that there's five tiers. Best, good, average, faulty, and bad. And I'll be putting each Minecraft server in one of these tiers. And now let's rank our first server. Mindplex. So Mindplex is actually a pretty sad server because it was once the largest server in Minecraft history. It was a very lively server, even rivaling servers like Hypixel. I mean, Mindplex had mini games like Master Builders, which was basically Build Battle, Sheep Quest, which was a popular mini game about collecting sheep, The Bridges, which is like a variation on the Walls mini game, and of course Hunger Games, along with many others. Another big thing Mindplex had going for them was that Mindplex was co-owned by the popular Minecraft YouTuber Captain Sparkles, and he frequently made videos on the server weekly. Weekly. And we also can't forget Mindplex signature hub world. But now all this sounds great, so what's so sad about Mindplex? Well, due to a lot of reasons such as a ton of hackers, very laggy games, and bugs not being fixed, among other things, Mindplex today is now a far cry from the popularity it once had. With the Java edition of the server sometimes reaching as low as 200 players, compared to the average of 10,000 it had back in 2014 and 15. Now a lack of players might not seem like it will affect you all that much, but since Mindplex had so little players, that means certain minigames had to be removed, and it's a lot harder to find enough players to even start a game. It's really sad, but because of everything Mindplex once did, I think it at least deserves a faulty tier. Now Cubecraft. So Cubecraft is a part of the Bedrock featured servers, and much like other servers like Mindplex and Hypixel, it's a minigame server. And with that, it's actually one of the most popular servers on Bedrock Edition as a whole, which is no small feat. But while Cubecraft is mainly a Bedrock Edition server, they do have an almost identical Java server as well, which is a nice little bonus. But what Cubecraft is probably most known for is adding Egg Wars, which is a minigame that's basically like Hypixel Bed Wars. But why Egg Wars was such a big deal was because it not only came out before Bed Wars, but actually popularized the minigame as a whole. Now don't get me wrong, Cubecraft didn't invent Egg Wars, but it really did help make it such a popular minigame. Now one pretty big drawback that Cubecraft does have is that they only host servers in Europe. So if you want to play Cubecraft in places like the US or Asia, then it might be a little laggy compared to the players in Europe. But to be fair, that's the case for a lot of servers, so overall, Cubecraft is a good tier. 2B2T, or as we all know it as the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. So 2B2T, which technically stands for 2 Builders, 2 Tools, is an anarchy server. There's almost no rules, no staff, and no chat filter. I mean, you just have to take one look at the spawn of the server just to see the utter chaos that have taken place here. The server also launched all the way back in December 2010, so as you could expect, there's a lot of history to this server. With multiple gangs and wars being fought on 2B2T over the years, it's really one of a kind. But that's just from the outside side looking in. Now what's the server actually like to play on? Well first you're just gonna have to join the server, which is really hard due to there being a limit of only 200 players at a time allowed on 2B2T. But once you do get in, you're gonna see a whole lot of this. Yeah, this server is not very enjoyable if you don't have any hacks, and especially not enjoyable if you don't have any pre-established groups or clans you could join. 2B2T is a really enjoyable server to watch and learn the history of, but in actuality it's really not that fun to play on yourself for more than a couple of hours. 2B2T is an average tier. The Hive. Now, The Hive is a minigame server that originally started on Java and was one of the first servers to add survival games. Back when survival games was by far the most popular minigame in Minecraft. Now, when The Hive originally added survival games, not a lot of other servers had it, so since The Hive was quick to add survival games, that's how they managed to initially attract a lot of players. But that was all in the past and on Java, and now in present day, The Hive is mainly a bedrock server and survival games just seems to be another average game mode of theirs. Nowadays, they seem to be your typical variety minigame server, with the minigames such as Bed Wars, Sky Wars, Hide and Seek, and Survival Games, among others. But the Hive doesn't really have any defining features when compared to other servers. It's not good or bad, it's just average. So the Hive is an average tier. Now Lifeboat. So Lifeboat is pretty unique because it was actually the first real Minecraft Pocket Edition server. You see, when Pocket Edition launched, it didn't have the ability to join a server for quite a while. But then eventually, when Mojang added servers to Pocket Edition, one of the first ones right there waiting was Lifeboat. Lifeboat. Now don't get me wrong, there might have been some other servers here and there, but Lifeboat was really the first and for a while the only good server you could actually play on. So as you could tell, Lifeboat definitely holds a special place in those early Pocket Edition players' hearts. But is the server actually 
good though? Well, it's really just your typical minigame server with some classic minigames such as Bed Wars, Survival Games, and Skyblock. Nothing too innovative. Lifeboat also has a lot of lag compared to other servers, and it really just seems like they're popular because they were able to capitalize on the early Pocket Edition server hype, and not really because they're that great of a server. Lifeboat is a bad tier. Hypixel, the one you've all been waiting for. So Hypixel is by far the biggest server on Minecraft, and it's not even close. I mean, Hypixel averages about 100,000 active players daily. But is that all for a good reason? Well, Hypixel originally started getting popular because they added adventure maps like Herobrine's Mansion to their server. And at the time, it was really unique to have a whole adventure map on a server for anyone to play, especially if you didn't want to go through the trouble of setting up an adventure map by yourself. So they did that, and after a while, they slowly gained players. But then in January 2017, Hypixel did something that would change their server forever. They added the first prototype for Bed Wars, and it exploded. But they weren't done. Fast forward two years, and in June 2019, Hypixel officially released Skyblock to their server. And after that, the Hypixel player count skyrocketed, and since then, it's been the most popular Minecraft server by far. But what does Hypixel do differently compared to similar servers like Cubecraft and The Hive? Well, first off, Hypixel has a lot more mini games you could play compared to other servers. And along with that, Hypixel seems to be a really well-optimized server with not a lot of lag or glitches. Also, Hypixel's version of Skyblock just seems to be unrivaled when compared to other servers' Skyblocks. To be honest, Hypixel seems like it's its own game inside of Minecraft and really just shows the extent of how customizable Minecraft really is. But one big downside to Hypixel is that it's only a Java server, so Bedrock Edition players can't play on it at all. Which is really a shame, but even with that, I still think Hypixel is a best tier. And you know what else is best? Freedom. And it's a shame I don't have that, because I was forced to make this video.